and he definitely shows these are some of the things you've done and I believe you can be an inspiration as well to others. Just a short uh, definitely. story. Definitely. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, I think my entrepreneurship journey started in around 2015 when I got the great opportunity to study at the African Leadership Academy in South Africa. Right. Basically an institution focused on developing you know, the next generation of entrepreneurial and ethical leaders. Right? And so that was my first exposure to the startup world, things yeah. of um, you know, entrepreneurship, how do you solve problems. And yeah, so apropos I problems, ni mingi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> problems, tukonazo um, mingi. Right. But yeah, I, I learned how to think about our problems from an entrepreneurial standpoint and um, figure out how can I be part of the solution. And yeah. so um, around 2016, I got the great opportunity to uh, basically start my, my own business. And so um, I got the chance to go to Silicon Valley out in right. California to incubate my first um, business idea. And so, right. so this is a program I found online. And, yeah. you know, I applied. I said, hey, I have this idea, etc. Right. And so I mm -hmm. got a scholarship to go, go out there. Yeah. And so I spent about, you know, two, three months in, in Silicon Valley, basically the global hub of startups. Nice. And yeah. I realized that these guys are on some other level. And so yeah. that's why I got my first training in business. I came back. Yeah. Um, just before university, I took a, a gap year right. and I started my first business, which was a skills training um, company called Project Exponential. We're working with high schools and universities, basically creating co-curricular programs that are helping young people to, you know, think entrepreneurially, be problem yeah. solvers, get work, um, yeah. professional development. Mm -hmm. And then I went off to university. I was at the African Leadership University in Mauritius, where, again, I studied business management. So, you yeah. know, I wanted to figure out, hey, you know, can I formalize my education in business? Yeah. And really, you know, take it a lot deeper. And so yeah. while I was in school, I was still running this uh, Biashara. Yeah. And um, I was also, you know, doing internships here and there, just trying to, like, widen my exposure. Right. And so, yeah, one thing led to another. And, you know, by the time I was graduating, um, I had also started a podcast, which I run right now. It's called Boardroom Banter Podcast. Yeah. And basically, we sit down with entrepreneurs and right. captains of industry, etc. And we just talk about their stories and their yeah. journey. And the think tanks of that space, because I believe yeah. it's also a creative space. What a lot of people actually underestimate is entrepreneurship is creativity. It and is. as much as they say, you know, get your talent, go sing. Even yeah. singing is a business. You need to know how to manage the dynamics exactly. of how to network. That is business, my exactly. friend. Exactly. So I think a lot of people underestimate that. And I think now that we're here to talk about it, I think it will give more insight. Now, when you look at uh, your experience in Kenya right yeah. here, now that you have a lot of blocks on your CV or mm -hmm. on your resume, uh, where do you see, uh, let's say, maybe the future of even startups right here. And maybe if you were to point some of the nitty gritties. For example, you said you even started yours. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can tell us what was it and what were the initial stages. And maybe what yeah. are some of the things that you put together before yeah. it manifested and came to fruition? Right, so, I mean, just like any other entrepreneur, I've, I've started a couple of things, some things failed along the way. Um, yeah. At some point I, I tried e-commerce, tried to do a business there, didn't work out. Tried yeah. something in, in like, Finance didn't really work out, yeah. um, but but some of the things that did work for me, for example, with Project Exponential, the skills training business, yeah. that was something that you know I I looked around and I asked myself, what's what's missing or what do I wish I had? Right. Um, let's say when I was in high school, etc. You know what problems are my peers facing? Yeah. And I put myself in a I put on my problem solving hat and said, okay, if if there's Millions of young Kenyans who are struggling with um, getting skills that can quote unquote pay the bills, right? Yeah. They're struggling with finding um, professional opportunities that they can plug into and, you know, make meaningful income, or they're struggling with figuring out how to start a business. Can I create and, and put together a support program or content that would allow these guys to upskill? And so yeah. that's, that's basically how that started. And, yeah. um, with, for example, my podcast, it was a case of, okay, there's lots of great entrepreneurs who have amazing stories. No one is telling these stories. Again, so seeing, yeah. seeing that there's a gap somewhere, right. something can be done about that gap. 
mm -hmm. figuring out what kind of a business can I set up to address that gap. Yes. And then you build it and you scale it. So, yeah. so that's, th that's how my that's thinking around. That's the niche around. that you carved for exactly. yourself as well. Exactly. And also maybe uh, a lot of people usually just tell success stories. Like, you know, I started a business and yeah. nobody tells about the other side. And I think yes. the other side matters even more. Just like the saying goes, for you to succeed, you must fail several yeah. times. Yeah. So fail stories as well as success stories, I think on both sides of the divide, they play a huge role even in inspiring that other person is on that other side. Because I believe everyone has a dream and a vision of at least starting something. Yes. Uh, when you look at stories that meet Tumba, I don't know Hawking, I don't know where would you place it. Uh, mm. I'm Tumba business, there's somebody has just an idea. Because of course these things start as ideas and that's yes. where creativity comes in. Yes. Before you even put it on paper and then first implement it and go through those stages. Mm. Uh, I don't know where would you place the Mitumba business right in Kenya? Would you call it a startup? Or <laughs> it falls under the general ecosystem of SMEs, small <laughs> medium term enterprises? Right, right. Um, yeah. It depends. I mean, any business that is starting up can be defined as a startup. Yeah. I think what, what a lot of entrepreneurs don't take enough advantage of is finding a unique differentiator to your business. So for right. example, I mean, I know many of these Instagram pages where, you know, guys are selling Tumba stuff and then they like upsell it or, or, or something like yeah. that. Or yeah. guys who just, you know, do it brick and mortar. Yani, they have a, a stall somewhere. Yeah. Um, in like Toi or Gikosh, et cetera. Or even in town. Or even in Tao. Yeah. And so uh -huh. that is a startup. But uh, you, you see, the guys who really make good money from that are the ones who figure out that, hey, as much as, yeah, I can sell to guys who are passing me by on the road, can yeah. I also create a digital presence? And can I, you know, model yeah. the clothes nicely? Can I have good... Um, product pictures, can I, you know, start reinvesting some of my revenues into advertising, you know. Yeah. Now, now, those are the guys who, I'd say, are positioned to scale and actually take that business somewhere. Yeah. Whereas if you are still doing it in the traditional sense of things, yeah. um, you might only be able to make enough money to, like, cover your immediate costs. But I, yeah. I don't see a path to scale. So yeah. shout out to guys who have figured out to how to digitize their... Yeah their businesses in that and, sense. And have the online present. Mm. Because also, but, but also on the other side, it's working. The traditional way, I'm pretty sure, Brav, you've yeah. met Mamambogas who have a very strong network of yeah. constant <laughs> clients. <laughs> yani, kama si wio mama, anunui kuingine samaki. That's and they've true. established that uh, niche, adi with their client, like they're, yeah. they're called return clients. Yeah. Kama si apo haendi kuingine. And I think it's strong. But then it means you've, you've been there for a minute before. True you establish such a strong connection or relationship with their clients. But then, mm -hmm. like you mentioned, tech is really improving. And I think it has come to razzmatize and just give everything a facelift. Yes. And I think you mentioned as well Instagram. I love that Instagram has this place where it's called Instashop. Yes. And nowadays you're able to just click on a page and exactly. you even ship something from abroad or even exactly. just right here in Kenya. Yeah. Uh, from where you sit in your experience, you've met a lot of great people in the entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial space. Yes. Uh, I, 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 saw, I saw a post where you met Vusi. Yeah. Yes. He, yeah. He's one of the great world leaders as well. Yes. Um, how would you advise uh, somebody who is thinking of starting, let's say, a milk vending? you know, business mm. to tap into tech and ensure that they reach out to their target audience or mm. their target customer. First of all, who is their target customer? Because right. <laughs> I believe it, it can be a general audience, but then you can narrow it down specifically to maybe right. university right. students. Yes. Yeah. So, so, so one of the things that I do on a day to day is um, supporting entrepreneurs who are in the early stage. So maybe they have just an idea or, you know, they've just started to put together some sort of product. So I'm a startup mentor at an institute. It's, it's an organization called Founder Institute. Yes. So it's basically, uh -huh. you know, one of the world's largest um, networks of entrepreneurs where they can get investment, they get mentorship, and, you know, yeah. we basically accelerate their businesses to a point yeah. where it scales, right? Oh, this is for people who are already starting something. See, wale wanyo nataka, wanataka pesa. Or jo 90% is atani pia pesa, ama na niongelesha. True, but, you know, the, yeah. the truth there is that, yeah, you uh -huh. want money, but, you know, do you have something worth investing in? So right. that's what that's now a good we, question. we guide good these question. entrepreneurs to build something that, yeah. you know, is is scalable and mm. if something is scalable it's attractive yes. to um to, to investors, investors yeah 
So and also, is it sensible, the idea, if you're presenting like a business idea, right? Exactly. Or so creative, even. Yeah, so mm -hmm. one of the things that, um, th and that's a good question about how can tech um, mm. help my business go to the mm. next level. Right. And it's something that I engage with on a day-to-day, -day helping these entrepreneurs figure out. Mm -hmm. And one of the key pathways to allowing tech to actually um, accelerate your business is mm -hmm. figuring out in what ways can I, number one, use tech for distribution and reach so wow. let's say uh -huh. you have a, right. a business and you have a product. Um, mm -hmm. Let's say you sell clothes or you sell milk, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tech can come and help you in terms of distribution from a standpoint of, first of all, maybe you're using social media as, uh -huh. uh, as a way to get reach, right? Yes. Uh -huh. You want to reach more people. Um, mm -hmm. Or it could be a thing of, okay, I have a product or service. Is there a way I can maybe build an app that allows users to interface with this thing or get access yeah. to it, right? Like mm -hmm. it can be delivered to you or, or, or something like that. So mm -hmm. that's one way tech can be used um, to help you scale your business. The second way is automating processes. So right. maybe a unique um, factor that your business runs on or, or helps you be competitive is that um, if there's a, r a recurring process that your, your business does on a day-to-day. -day. Oh. You use tech basically to automate that so that like five of your employees or five of, five of your team members are doing the work of, of 50 people you get. Yeah. That's another way that tech can help you in your business to, to do things much faster. Right now we have things like AI, chat, GPT, etc. You might yeah. find that your business is in content and you're a blogger. And yeah. whereas before you were able to write five articles and you know, maybe get sponsored mm. for a few of them, yeah. Uh, five articles in a week. Maybe now you can do 20 in a week because now AI has helped you yeah. accelerate. So, so mm -hmm. that's, that's another way. So I see it being helpful in distribution and, and also reach. in terms of... Reach. Reach as well. Yeah, uh -huh. distribution and reach and mm -hmm. um, automation of, of, of processes. Yeah. But also, uh, when, you look at, when you look at what you've just explained here, yeah. you've painted a really good panoramic view. I'm trying to imagine if this conversation was pushed to... Let's say a village girl or a village boy, uko yeah. interior, kule na yeah, yeah. <laughs> where they rarely have electricity, yeah. and maybe they don't even have a smartphone. I don't know yes. how, how, how would we calibrate this conversation yeah. to work here, pale on the table. Yeah. To say, man, I was Omena. Omena is a big business yeah. in, in Western <laughs> region. Yeah, uh, I love Omena. As well. Yeah, so how, how can we make them tap into this kind of conversation because yeah. at this point we are we are almost speaking on a ted talk level you're right yeah right. okay so i i think you know what someone who's out there needs to do is first sit down and understand what resources do i have around me yeah. right you, you can't get from somewhere to somewhere else without understanding like what what's in my hands right yeah. and so one of the things that i i fundamentally believe is that God places us somewhere with everything we need to be successful. Sometimes it doesn't look like much, but you might find that um, maybe at home you have some extra space and maybe you have one or two chickens, right? Maybe you can save up some pocket money, get an extra rooster there, you breed those chickens, nazifunga, alafu, unanza biashara ya mayai, ya maya, you know, poultry itself, the, the nyama, you know, yeah. so, so you had two chickens in your mm -hmm. compound. That's a business, right? Y yeah. y you just need to look at what you have in your hands and ask yourself, how can I multiply this and add value to it? And do people need this thing on a day to day? Everyone needs eggs, everyone needs chicken, you know? Yeah. So, so I'd, I'd say for someone like that, you need to sit down and look around you and say, well, like, what resources are around me? Yes. And then once you start with those small things, now one of the biggest, I'm, I'm a big advocate for upskilling. Right. right. Maybe you can expand what upskilling means. Yeah, up, upskilling. And scaling in general as well, because there's scaling and then you upscale. No, yeah. no, no, up, upskilling. Ups, or oh, upskill, not yeah. upscaling. Yeah, right. upskilling. Okay, and so, yeah. y you know, a reason why someone would start a successful business and run it really well or, or be able to engage with tech is that you have a skill set that allows you to do that, right? Or an mm -hmm. understanding of, of, of how something works, right? Absolutely. So, mm -hmm. I mean, 
look around you and also ask, okay, where can I go to learn a certain skill set yeah. that can maybe earn for me income and that income I can now reinvest into business yeah. or, um, you know, perhaps where can I go and sit down and, 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 and be, be taught or where, where can I find work, you know, so, so again, looking around you and saying, okay, if my yeah. skill set allows me a certain amount of opportunities, because yeah. I do believe and I, and I have seen mm. opportunities in life are sometimes directly proportional to, to your skill set and exposure. Right. So if a, a lot of people don't pay attention to that. By yeah. The way. So it's like, yeah. okay. This if, is what you know. If you don't really have a skill. Yeah. Um, and a skill can be, I'm a really good, I'm really good at breeding goods because I worked yeah. on my grandma's farm yeah. since I was a kid. I understand goods. Right. That's a skill. Yeah. Not many people understand goods. So yeah, you ask sure. yourself, with yeah. this skill set, you yeah. know, what, what extra value can I create for mm -hmm. my community? Upskilling. And that's how now mm. you start a business. That's right. how now you start a career in something. So, mm. yeah, And I think that is like mm. more of mentorship and like, let me help you realize your purpose. Yes, yes, yeah. you, yes you're talented at singing, but let's expand your vocal ability. Right. <laughs> right. How can you get it to a, a more marketable genre? Yeah. I think that's what you're, what you're trying to tell somebody who's watching right now but then also from your observation now that you've been on so many platforms mm -hmm. um, what are some of the notable things that you think are missing especially in our ecosystem right here of startups because also yeah. uh, I've interviewed lots of people here a lot of experts who come in fi from financial experts people from banks startups mm -hmm. uh, experts like you mm -hmm. and somebody tells me oh no you should not even start a business with money <laughs> borrowed blah 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 don't go to a bank and borrow money to start a business yes uh, so many things in there but then most of people are already out there and as much as you know somebody is having an idea to start afresh there's somebody who's already on the market with experience and they're even yes. looking maybe to diversify or even change or scale like you just mentioned so from your expertise and your third eye let me use that mm -hmm. what are some of the things you observed that can be maybe be pumped into to just give that space a facelift mm. so the like the entrepreneurship ecosystem etc like what's missing yes yeah I'd, I'd say mentorship is a big thing and you had touched on it earlier um, mm -hmm. i don't think enough existing entrepreneurs are creating spaces where they can coach and and teach this thing we're calling entrepreneurship right um and and you know that that's something as simple as you know your your uncle or auntie who has a a successful business somewhere saying yeah. you know every month i'm going to take five five interns yeah and and basically teach these young people this skill mm -hmm. um, i'm a big advocate for learning by working and yes. so you know this thing where young people feel like hey you know it's really tough to find work it's really tough to etc i think there's a bit of a mismatch there in terms of you know people who do have these opportunities who do have these businesses yeah. to open up their doors and say I'm really great at this thing and I have exposure in the market and time in the market um, yeah. studying this craft or building this business. Mm -hmm. Every month, let me employ a couple of young people j mm -hmm. just to teach and to, and to mentor and to equip. Right. Um, I, I think that's something that would really change the paradigm. Yeah. And if it just became a norm that after uni, you go and become an apprentice somewhere and, yes. uh -huh. you know, you learn that craft um, from from experts. I think that would really that would really help a lot of people yeah. bridge that experience gap and that skill set gap. Yeah, is that possibility of having, uh, let's say, a program where the government is sponsoring even mm -hmm. uh, some of these startups and giving them, let's say, like incentives? Because our SME, our SME is a, a ecosystem, from some of the people I've interviewed here, most of them yeah. say it's it's murky, it's a little bit shaky. Yeah, but there's there's times politics. Politics actually play a very huge role <laughs> in the how business is done in a country. Right. We saw that right. in the early beginning of 2023. Right. Ma, was it Manda Mano Monday, summer Tuesday? Yeah. Businesses <laughs> shut down, literally. <laughs> yeah, so politics plays a huge role. So how yeah. can government actually incentive, uh, incentivize uh, people that have you know, dreams or already in that space to just continue scaling and growing? Mm. Yeah, I, th I think the the first and most obvious thing government needs to do is make it easy for someone to run a business right, right? if there's no ease of doing business and starting business no one yeah. will be incentivized to even start 
to begin yeah. with, right? Uh -huh. so and that is the environment it curates. Exactly. Uh -huh. So is it, is it friendly to people who have little capital? Right. Mm. If you think of the average business and, you know, someone needs like 15 certificates or, or mm. regulatory some things to start. Each a small key business. Between <laughs> 5K to like 15K. And that for is for a small key business. That's, you have a small key <laughs> business. Can you imagine? Yeah. And so it's, it's no surprise that our informal economy stays informal yeah, because yeah. the cost to formalize is just way too high for a lot of people. Right. right? So I'd start off by saying, you know, government would need to basically create that environment where if today I have that idea and yeah. I want to sell my goats and chicken or I want to do value addition and make sausages because I have all these chickens, make chicken sausages and package them and sell, you know, how many, how many hoops and ladders do I need to climb in order to yeah. do that? Some people just stop with their ideas just because of that barrier to entry. So I'd yeah. start off there and... Secondly, maybe is, you know, making it almost mandatory for right. people to do like internships and uh, like yeah. attachments. Get that exposure. Kind of thing, that, that kind of exposure. Yeah. If, if government says, uh -huh. hey, for every business that takes um, five interns, you know, right. you get tax, tax write-off of X amount, you know. Yes. You have to speak business's language because yeah. you have to, I mean... You have to familiarize for real. Yeah. If, if you're saying take five people every uh -huh. every month, yeah. But you know now they have to pay that. But that's money out of the businesses. But that's not right. an incentive. But if you say, mm -hmm. look, if you give people apprenticeships and you know we cut a certain amount off of your like taxes and it can be written off or you know there's a way that yeah. um, that is that is put as an incentive. That that would be really great. Yeah, I wish the government would do that, what you've just said, because yeah, that would be really inspiring, like it would a thousand be. percent, yeah. It, it, it would be, it would be. And, and I guess it would be that there are people within government that are championing these kinds yes. of things. I think businesses, we need more champions yeah. um, in government who are saying, you know what, our yes. priority is making it easier for you to do business, and that's what someone is focused on day in and day out. I think that, yeah. would, that would really help us a lot. Yeah, there's a question here that I've been avoiding because it's going to take us from the start again. <laughs> uh, but let me just get into it. Uh, right. Hannah Anasema, so what is a startup? I think she had already explained, but she was going to answer that as well. Yeah. And then I think there's a and they share business, not a thousand. But I think this is also a question at some point we <laughs> once asked on our, so on our socials sometimes last year. Yeah. Right. Is it possible for, what is a startup? And to an business, a business, not a thousand, Bob. Ghani, bruv. But le let's hear from an expert if it's possible yeah. to, un yeah. to start something with a thousand bob. And what is a startup here? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I may miss that part. Yeah. I mean, a, a startup is just a small business that you know, people have put together. You could have a small team or something, but basically a startup is, is a small business that hasn't yet achieved large scale, right? You're not yeah. really big. You're not the biggest player in your industry, etc. You're just starting out. Maybe you're like between zero to five years of, yeah. of existence. That's that, that that's what a startup is. Start right. up. It's in the word. Start yeah, starting. Up. You're just starting up. Yeah. But then also you're meeting a niche as well, a specific niche. So no. Ex exactly. So uh -huh. and, and that's what business is. If, if you actually you know study business, yes. business one hundred and one is you have found a product or a service that serves a certain demographic that has demand for whatever it is you are supplying. That's business. Yeah. So if you're not doing any of those, I'd argue you're not in business. <laughs> you're um, just in your own app. You're <laughs> doing your own thing there. <laughs> and so right. to uh -huh. the question of, can you start, can a, business can you start a biashara with a thousand? thousand? Is, is it possible? Is it, is, it a li is, is it sensible? Yeah. You can start a business with zero. Okay. Yeah. Place a boom on beer. I'll <laughs> argue the greatest resource is ideas. Right. Uh -huh. The greatest resource is ideas. Right. Right. Uh -huh. And what ideas are able to do is attract money. Yes. So me, I'm a firm believer. I mean, I started my podcast with zero money. Yeah. Right. And your podcast is your business. And a podcast is a business. Mm. I just needed to figure out, okay, what resources do I have in hand? Nice. So again, we'd go back to that question. What, what do you have in hand? I'd argue that you have a lot more than a thousand bob. It's just that it's not cash that you have in hand. 
maybe it's there's a space somewhere that you could use to do something or there's a talent you have yeah that can make you money Yes. So a lot of young entrepreneurs, they sit and they look at their pocket and they ask, oh, what can I start with this 1,000, Bob? Yeah. The real question is, what talents do you have? Yeah. Or, or what, what skill, what skill yes. do you have? Yeah. Or what problem Are you can solving? you create a solution yeah. for? Yeah. That now yeah. maybe this 1,000, Bob, can contribute towards building some sort of solution. Mm. But um, I think a lot of young people, they, they stop at the resource the resources they think they have and mm. resources stops at money actually it's usually capital i don't have capital, I don't have capital. right but yeah. you know the truth is yeah if you have an idea that's good enough right and you play your cards right mm -hmm. you might find that you never even have to use your own money at some point right. you could find investors for this thing you could um, find a way to 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 basically get paid from the very first day and use your business's money to grow Yes. So, um, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd tell that person that they're asking the wrong question. I know they want, a, <laughs> I know they want an answer so that I tell them, oh, with a thousand, Bob, oh, buy, yeah. buy a tree of eggs, two trees yeah. of eggs, and then you, 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 you yeah. sell them for a profit. Yeah, but, but that's also business. That's also business. That's also business, and it's legible. Yeah. It's legible, and it's, it it's working. It yeah. So, so if maybe I was to answer it in a way that might uh -huh. make them happy, because mm -hmm. I know the first answer. Not everyone likes that answer. Right. Um, but that's why entrepreneurs are so few. Successful entrepreneurs are so few. Yeah. But it's because it's the small percentage of people who understand mm -hmm. how, to, how to commoditize yeah. their skills. And, you know, it's, yes. it's a rare thing. Yeah. But to answer that question in a way that they'll be happy. Right. Ask yourself, what can I buy for a thousand bob? Right. Which I can sell for a higher price. Mm. Smoky sample and, and picture. And how many times? Uh -huh. How many times can I do that equation yeah. of buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell? For how long, right? And for how long? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And are you picking a space where you have some sort of competitive advantage? Like, for example, mm -hmm. in your university or polytechnic or high school or something, you've noticed yeah. guys are always hungry after classes. Mm -hmm. What do you do about that? A thousand bob. Go buy some mandaos. Your mandazis maybe cost you a thousand bob. You sell them for a way in that when you sell all of them, you've made back two thousand bob. Y you know, yeah. So it's those small things where it's like you could buy, sell, buy, sell. So again, I'd, I'd ask that person, look around you. Is there a problem or is there a need? Does someone want something and they're not getting it? And can you a thousand bob buy that thing and you, you keep reselling to that target audience again and again and again? Yeah. Mm. I think you've got your answer, Hannah. Yeah, yeah. things <laughs> a little bit uh, <laughs> trivial, but I think it's a creative question as well. But also, like w what you've just said, uh, I believe from all these insights that you're giving, yeah, I'm getting a picture of an entrepreneur who is somebody who is goal oriented, mm. and they always have a vision of something. But yes. you know, there's uh, you can start something and get stuck. Yeah, True. you can get stuck at some point. You know, some how, do, how do you feel like giving up? But I also believe yeah. it's part of the journey. Like every every. Every business, every career, there's a place where you feel like, oh my goodness, mm. I'm, uh, I'm hitting that deadlock. But then yeah. how can you wake up from those shackles of stagnation mm. and mm. scale or take a different tangent? Is yeah. it possible to be flexible in your operations? Like during bad times, this mm. is what I do. And mm. still you manage to stay afloat and maybe even people outside will not even notice. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. I think entrepreneurship can be a tough journey. It can be a lonely journey as well. Um, yeah, it's, not it's not for the faint-hearted. It's not for the faint-hearted. But uh, also on the upside, you know, your, your reward and returns are basically infinite. Like the, the, the limit of how much you can grow, it's, it's, it's as big as the world's economy is in the sense of like potential to grow is so big, right? That, that's the nature of entrepreneurship and, and having a business. And so yeah. some of the things that I've personally learned from even just dealing with the tough times, dealing with what happens when your, your business doesn't go anywhere and you have to start again, is yeah. first of all realizing that it's okay to start again, especially for us as young guys. By the way, the, the truth is that you might have to go through like two, three, four, five, six, seven business ideas before you, you reach that one that really takes you somewhere. Sometimes people get it on the first one. That's okay. Oh, it's possible to hack it day one. Yeah, <laughs> some people get it on 
the second yeah. try. That's mm -hmm. okay. Everything Bad is so try. different. But and even on the tenth one. But even your tenth one could be yeah. the one that takes you to a billion dollars. Yeah. Believe you me, you will not remember those first nine. It won't mm. matter. It will address the pain. <laughs> it will. <laughs> So, right, so yeah. I'd say I'd say first of all, starting off with a with a really big vision for yourself, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of young people, we 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 put a, a ceiling on our potential based on what we've seen our peers or people from our situation accomplish. Even the environment as well. Yeah. So you might mm -hmm. be like, I, me, uku kumta, sijayona mtu aki aki blow up. You know, someone has really gotten successful. So maybe that means that my chances and my options are only one, two, three, and four. Yeah. And that's human nature, and that's okay. That's how we think. But I mm. think as an entrepreneur, you need to rewire yourself and, and find new models and new people to look up to and say, yeah. anyway, such and such person started with zero and they're somewhere. That's my goal, you know. So I'd say yeah. having a big goal, consuming the right content, yeah. entrepreneurship is mindset. Now, if every right. day you're sitting on your phone consuming garbage, yeah. surely, like, <laughs> you're not really cultivating a mindset of someone who is, is, is learning, who is growing. And yeah. also, the internet has, is a great exposure tool. Right. You know, so what are you exposing yourself to? And if your environment cannot give you great models of success to aspire to, use yeah. the internet, go research, go see. There are other Africans who are doing amazing things out there the difference between you and them is just knowledge. And that's right. where tech and the internet come in to bridge that knowledge gap. So I'd say, yeah, like, inspire yourself, be inspired, consume the right content. Um, yeah. I, how, do you, how do you find that you, you're in a tough situation? Like, in you know, bundles, Zakwenda TikTok, to do nothing. Yeah. But they, do you know how many free courses online you could have done? Right. Those same bundles. You know, right. so anyway, I digress. Back mm -hmm. to, back to um, yeah. the topic mm -hmm. there. Also, having, having good company helps. So yeah. your friends, are they guys who are encouraging you? Like, yeah. Yani Manze. Na for watu when you, you don't think in the same dimension. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so but you know, somebody would say, why should I cut off my friends? Like, we are homies forever. Yeah, you're why homies forever, I? but like, <laughs> where, where But you when it comes to business, that's where you draw yeah, a red so line. <laughs> So the truth is that you yeah. want peers who are, who are also ambitious. Right. Guys who are like, Enye, guys, me, I have a thaw. You, you also have a thaw. You, you have a, a goat. You, you have a chicken. You, you have yeah. a this. Let's bring our things together. Let's, you know, those are the kinds of friends that, Enye, yeah. even, even when things are tough, yeah. imagine your buddies will be there for you. Yeah. Because again, like I said, entrepreneurship can be lonely. Like, right. me, if you find guys who are like really yeah. tuned into that thing, yeah. Unaku support, unaku peer encouragement, mm -hmm. um, peer that opportunities. Community, that community of, of that, friends. That who, community is so yeah. important. Yeah. And so. And yeah. I think a lot of people underestimate that. I'll be like, ah, Tanzisha too. Yeah. Tanzisha too, and then yeah. I'll go further. But it really, it really takes a lot. It really it takes does. a lot. Yesterday I was scrolling through IG and I was, I think it was yeah. Miss Tina Norris. And I just discovered that she's mother to Beyonce. And she was talking about yeah. this fellowship uh, that she started in Nairobi. I think it's called Bay Good. Very good. I think it's really? Beyonce's name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, was, I just saw it on Instagram, like, Jana or Siku Siku, and the comments are like, mm -hmm. we didn't know this was a fellowship that was here in Kenya, and they've even given people platforms and forums about stories as a business and expanding. Wow. Yes. This is from Tina Noyles, that is the mother to Beyonce. I just discovered yeah. that, Jana, on IG, a commentage. And it had people in the video that I know. Mm -hmm. So I was like, what? Kumbe, they've been doing business in Kenya and even expanding and giving people, giving people you know, fellowships and trainings on how mm -hmm. to even uh, stay afloat business. So it was really interesting. Mm -hmm. But then also when you look at uh, the platforms that you've been on to, not so many people can really get to that. Uh, but I, I want to ask you, is it possible to have uh, an entrepreneur or a business owner who has that X factor in their business? Like, I don't want to mention the brands, but... Mm -hmm. There's a possibility, like when you see this brand, definitely it has an X factor in it because it's, it's been resilient. It has such a strong online presence and the people that gravitate towards it, like it's a welcoming, it's a welcoming product or brand. At some point I saw Caroline Toko saying, you know, your imaging of your, your product is, is yeah. it announces itself to the people. It's, it's like, welcome to my TED exactly. talk, but now welcome to my business. Exactly. So for people to tap into such a spectrum, especially 
mm. wenye umetoka na vaholo <laughs> vile tumesema mm. how can they get to this platform and get this amazing mm. insights and nuggets right i mean it, it starts with and your question is basically how can they you know someone who is from yes interior cool interior mm. basically build something that has that x factor yes that wow factor. and is it possible by the way to have an x factor business yeah. like, are there people you've met and you're like damn yeah bro you're way up there yeah have you met a lot such entrepreneurs a, yeah a lot of those and um i'd say advice to someone who is far out and wants to create something like that is again looking around you and asking okay wh- what's my what's my community like right yeah. you have to start within your community before you go anywhere else right those are the guys that you understand best those are the guys who will understand you best right yeah. and so asking yourself okay what is it about me and what i have to offer um and 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 what 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 do i have that can resonate to to someone like who who will resonate to this message right yeah um this tv station for example you guys have figured out that hey there's this youth demographic that we can resonate to and by creating content that aligns to their goals and interest therefore they will gravitate towards this brand and continue consuming our content right yeah. that, that, that's basically what business is figure out who who wants what you have that could be a product that could be a service that could be you as a personality who who wants what i have and how can i reach them right so asking yourself okay maybe i'm interiors i can be hosting football tournaments yeah the local church here has like a field there mm. let me let me put together football tournaments me i'm interested in sports that's my thing yeah. create yeah. a brand around that right give it a cool name make a ka, go to the cyber make a ka logo there's all these free softwares by the you can make a logo in yeah. 15 minutes literally anyone yes. can make a logo canva shout out canva <laughs> quick free yeah done mm. you have a logo print mm. that thing a few shillings you have you have pamphlet nini 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 yeah you have a tournament you know you've gather people around whatever whatever maybe now you have stuff you want to sell now you sell it to people you know creating a brand is it's more about can people resonate to my story and my product yeah. or, or the problem i'm solving can they resonate to that yeah. and then being intentional about consistently and effectively communicating that right yeah so so i'd say yeah like lots of people have that x factor mm. no i mean no, not too many businesses have that x factor yeah Um, a few selected <laughs> a few select do but it's because mm. they've put in the work to understand their target audience and relate to them and it's for years for years i wish you would mention brands but we're not yeah <laughs> i no, wish you would mention people brands. know them people know them yeah Just sit in your house and look at what you admire who do you admire right there's a reason why they do and that's that x factor right absolutely yeah. uh, also uh, like you mentioned actually i wanted for somebody who would love maybe to be in, in the forums you've been at because yeah. you know meeting Vusi Vusi yeah. he's Vusi the Tembe Kwayo Tembe eh yeah hey, please Staki ku kwa sud you know mispronouncing people's yeah, name but yeah guy. he's a really great uh, uh, speaker when it comes to you know exactly what you're, you're giving insights right here yes. so maybe for somebody who doesn't have such a role model mm-hmm. is it possible for them to like you said the environment actually speaks to you Yeah. Maybe where you are there's a lot of limiting factors and limiting barriers. Mm. But you you're striving so hard to break from the barriers but then you keep on going back. You know yeah. there's that cycle of repetition. Mm. You invest to get ahead but then you just keep on rotating and circling back at the same 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 cocoon and yeah. finally you give up. Mm. And you just become stagnant. Mm. So how can uh, f- uh, maybe also future startups maybe let's say disintegrate from such a culture and such a cycle of just rotating in the same vicinity mm. over and over again yeah um you know i think it was albert einstein who said uh insanity is doing the same thing over and over expecting a different result yeah so i think people need to sit down and look at what they're doing and ask themselves am i doing the same thing over and over yes expecting a different result right yes <laughs> am i trying to sell this product 
again and again, no one is buying this thing. Yeah. And I'm thinking that, hey, this entrepreneurship thing maybe is not for me. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think it's time you, you change something. Right? Yes. So I'd say that the entrepreneurs that I, I personally look up to and I think are doing a great job yes. are people who iterate, right? And iteration is basically doing something right. again and again or and, and each different time you're, you're changing something, right? You're experimenting. Yes. And so, yeah, I'd, I'd encourage them to, to experiment. The reason you're stuck in a cycle is because the factors that went into whatever actions you're doing and whatever outcomes and inputs, inputs you're putting into your business Yes. Are the same. They're not changing. So your outcomes are going to be the same. So I'd, I'd mm -hmm. encourage them to change the inputs, change the idea, change the product, change the yeah. service. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I is it possible for maybe a person to do collaborations with uh, someone who's already established? Mm -hmm. Because also if I'm bringing you on board, it means yeah. uh, we are, like you mentioned the word resonate. It yeah. means we are resonating. But maybe at some point you're not resonating, but you're just there to support. Is it possible for a startup to look at somebody who's already on that already in their trajectory, they're already moving to, to their future. Now may talk a lot of the blues and you finally merge and you keep the conversation going. Is it possible? Mm. Yeah, no, it is, it is. Uh -huh. um, Maybe it's a different product. Especially Kunaoma, they want to use a liquid. Yeah. They, in mm. fact, they manufacture it from scratch. They do, yes. they do. Yeah, and it finally becomes a, a big thing. Is it possible to merge those two? Milk, uh, zero. Like, I mean, that's a very specific example you're asking. Um, yeah. Maybe to answer it from a more general standpoint. Um, yes. Yeah, partnerships, if you look at any successful business, they have partnerships that allow them to, to grow, right? Yeah. Um, and basically what you're asking here, if I'm correct, is, mm -hmm. you know, how can someone who's a, bi a little less established... Yes, exactly. Maybe <laughs> partner with a person or, or a business that a bit mm. further ahead. Ready, yeah. The, the, key key there, <laughs> yeah, the, the key there is, are yeah. you solving a problem for that business? Right. Right, so, or, or do you have something that that business needs? Yeah. So let's say, um, you know, you're, you're a government and you've started a, a football tournament right. for your community. So you've said, as we have so many young guys, they're idle, they need to do something, and my... My business is, I will create a tournament where guys will pay maybe 50 bob entrance and there's a prize. And you know, you've done your math to figure out even if we pay off this prize, there's some certain profit you've made, right? Yeah. Um, and now this person wants to partner with, um, you know, some sort of unrelated brand or whatever, another business. Ask yourself, what do you, what do you have that this other person has? For example, this guy who's built this tournament from scratch, has an audience, right? You have a, a big group of youth who gather in one space consistently at certain times, um, yeah. let's say every month, right? Mm -hmm. That's something that's marketable to a business that maybe has a product or service that right. they can sell to whatever demographic you have. That yeah. business might be way more established, but mm -hmm. you see, you've brought something to the table. So mm -hmm. I think for entrepreneurs, you need to look at what you have and ask yourself, what do I bring to the table here? Yes. That would allow me to get into conversation with this more established business yeah. or brand right. um, and, and, and position myself to be valuable. Business right. is about value. Like, yeah. if value you're not adding addition. value, yeah. you're, either, you're either taking resources from me as a business or adding them to me. And mm. we know most businesses are more interested if you're adding, yeah, adding some resources. Sort of resource. Yeah. yeah. Mm, really interesting. Because also we've even seen big franchises uh, yeah. merge at the, uh, from hypermarket, supermarket, and exactly. they go to uptown, yeah, yeah. Yada. But then also competition in that space is really, I don't know if competition should be healthy or it should be unhealthy. Yeah. Uh, there's somebody who said attack a competition because umefungu up a butchery leo and yeah. the next wall a neighbor opens a similar butchery and you're like, brav, kwani ulikosa <laughs> location ingine ama are you trying me or something? Because we are competing for the same, 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 same clientele. In the same location. Yes, same premises to make it even worse. Yeah. So how can I make mine even? Because up sasa I think up on the story, and you sasa. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it will, it will, it will ha you'll have to make it so exclusive and serve your clients, I don't know with what. So in such, in, in such an, uh, a setup, mm -hmm. how can the other one maintain their gradient? Right. And this other one as well. Because you guys are serving the same product. 
mm. to the same clientele. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's again, business 101, differentiation, basically, and differentiation basically means what's my unique selling point, right? So yeah. it, it might just be that um, my butchery is more famous than the one next door because mm. mine is not just a butchery, but also we have a, a grill hapo that una choma nyama pia. You get mm. But these are the guys <laughs> that are just selling the raw meat. Itabidi utembe nyumbani. Then now you cut up your thing. And, but these guys yeah. here, they have some mutura, they have some samosas, whatever. Yeah. Variety. It smells, it smells better. It smells yeah. nice. You know. Hygiene is top hygiene notch. Hygiene is top. Nice. So definitely <laughs> someone is yeah. going to gravitate towards this other business. And then as an entrepreneur, you can charge a premium for that. Add an extra five shillings to your price. People yeah. are willing to put money where they get some sort value. of convenience Thank or some yeah, sort yeah. of value. Now that would be a lot. That would be strenuous, I think. Mm. If you add, let's for example, if a kilo, in, we are yeah. trying to creatively create this butchery here. Yeah. That kilo is going for maybe 200 and you're adding 250. Yeah. W what will prevent me from going to the neighbor who's selling it at 150? All those other things that we just mentioned. Yeah. That first of all, you are going to go find all your friends there. That's mm -hmm. the cool, that's a cool place to hang out. Jukuna yeah. mtura hapo, there's siji, yeah, soda, etc. Rumba, rumba there's, there's there's music, <laughs> mini. Yeah, yeah, so people are willing to pay extra yes. for, for, for that, that X factor, service. that excellence, yes. that mm -hmm. whatever. But also right. you might find, I mean, in the world of business, you might find a way to, because you're, you're adding value in other places and maybe you have that barbecue grill there. Now you're making some money from chomeng nyama. Yeah. And you know chomad nyama kilo kilo for kilo sells mm -hmm. for more than raw meat, right? Yeah, true. Absolutely. So yeah. you might find that when as a business person you sit with your books and your accounts and you say that okay actually because we're making a lot of a lot more money from this extra uh, nyama choma I can actually reduce the cost of my raw meat. Yeah. So whereas you know, on one end, you could up your prices. You might find that they could actually reduce their prices, put this other business out of out of out of business. You know, yeah. Because now you're be getting fifty bucks. Very cheaper. unfair <laughs> for your neighbor. Yeah. But, but anyways, is, that's what's up. That's, that's business. business. Yeah. That's business. Yeah. And so you you've not made a loss as a business because you made yeah. that fifty bob back mm -hmm. on the nyamchom. Right. But as far as people are concerned, you are the cheaper butchery. Mm. But we just have variety. Yeah, the you, variety. You, you've done business. That's what business is. Yeah. Mm. Well, I hope when your time is shine, But <laughs> then, uh, wh when do we call it this is unhealthy competition? Right. Because uh, I, I believe I believe most most entrepreneurs entrepreneurs would like I want a safe environment that's conducive for my business. Stuck in yeah. my shida, stuck in my suara, yeah. nini nini. Uh, at what point do we say this is unhealthy competition, mm. and you need to switch gears to the left or to the right? I mean, unhealthy competition now when, when you start risking your life because of your business. Yani, you're in some business where there's cartels and, you know, you find that as a new entrant, guys have come to your house at night and told you, they, with pangas and they've told you, and you're here, you either mm. move out of town or mm. start a different business. I think mm. that's when now things mm. start to get unhealthy. That's extreme. That's, that's extreme. But, you yeah. know, it happens. Ask, yeah. ask most of your local entrepreneurs by they, they, they probably have one or two stories about a yeah. time they ventured into a certain industry. Right. Wakafukuzwa uh, with a lot of force. Right. So sometimes when competition starts to get life threatening or, or yeah. to a point where, you know, maybe someone is offering a, a service, a product or service and They've just cut prices so much to a point where you, you can't even exist in the same space as them. Um, yeah. <laughs> but the truth is, that's a bit healthier than now when, you know, people are doing threats, people are doing whatever. So that's when competition becomes unhealthy. But fundamentally, I believe competition is good for business because that's how businesses yeah. innovate. Right. Mm. Yeah, th there's a friend I spoke to who was uh, telling me about how she, I think she was also a guest here. Yeah. She talked about, she, she has a, a, a popcorn business at Sarit Center. 
Nice. And uh, she was talking about how she, at first, she was just making it in-house. Yeah. And then she branched out and until she got into a store at Sarit, which is a big place. Mm. You know that. Mm. And uh, Anasema, most of he, her clients are return clients. In short, I'm mm. to maintain. And they even spread the word about mm. the flavors of popcorn she sells. So it's like, wow, that's an excellent way of actually also protecting your clientele. And now that there's, if they consume the product and they tell another one and it becomes a chain of yes. clientele, yes. that's really excellent service. And also they lo look at the location where they are. So I think that's really good as well for mm -hmm. an entrepreneur to learn. Like how you relate to your clients, your relationship you have with them. Yeah. Sometimes I believe not everyone is open to feedback and I believe it's really imperative. You'll talk about that, how's, how, how important is feedback mm -hmm. from your clients to mm -hmm. your business. Maybe we can just go right into it, dice it up. Yeah, no, feedback is important. Because uh -huh. again, back to business 101, you're in, the, you're in the basically industry of serving your client to exceed their expectations, right? But how do you know what their expectations are? Mm -hmm. The best and maybe the, actually the only way is just to interact with these guys and say, okay, You've been eating my popcorn. I have this popcorn stand somewhere in Tao or something. Yeah. Uh, you come by every day and you, you, you eat this popcorn. How come you like our popcorn so much? By the way, that's yeah. an okay question to ask your customer. Yeah. Like, how co you, you keep coming here. By the, by the way, what's it about this place? Yeah. Maybe a guy will tell you, hey, look, this thing is convenient for me on my way home. Right? Yeah. Or someone will tell you, by the way, your popcorn is, is well priced. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I like it. Or right? my kids love it. Or it's my kids that really <laughs> like this popcorn. Yeah. I mean, the butter flavor is really yeah, buttery. That, that <laughs> butter flavor that you have, uh, or that uh, caramel flavor, or that yeah. um, chocolate, that and many others. whatever flavor. Uh, yeah. And then you find that, hey, look, if, if these guys really enjoy this thing, how about I, I double down on that flavor? You know, I, I make sure that it's r always readily available. Um, maybe I can advertise this as, and, and shift my business to be like a, uh, what, what's that, like a, a salted caramel flavor yeah. only. And that's right. like my niche, that's my brand. And mm. you perfect that recipe and you do it really well. Yeah. That's how consumers... And you realize it's specifically for a certain demographic yeah. of people yeah. who just come for that. And they come for that specific thing. So if you do yeah. that specific thing yeah. really well, yeah. you'll find that, first of all, you've differentiated yourself from um, your competition. Yep. Right. And yeah. also you've found a special place in the hearts of your consumer where they know yeah. that if I need this one thing, Mm -hmm. This is the only guy that right. I want to actually go to for it. Yeah, we're just about to exit, but I want you to give the greatest uh, piece of advice to any upcoming entrepreneur. And then also your podcast, you have it. Uh, shortly, Definitely. you can briefly talk about it in just two minutes because you're just about to exit. Yeah. And then also maybe who is the greatest, uh, I'd say, inspirational, life-changing um, business speaker that you met in your line of duty that you're like, wow, yeah. I'm amazed at what this guy has yeah. done in terms of entrepreneurship. Right. Yeah. Um, so you can start with a great, uh, with a piece of advice and then yes. you can go to your uh, pod podcast and then the okay. greatest speaker. Sure thing. So you um, exit. Yeah, greatest piece of advice was to fail and fail again until you succeed. Uh -huh. Right, and and failing might not look always like you know your business has completely turned over and gone upside down, but right. I mean, it could be in small things that okay maybe I didn't do this so well, maybe I need to improve on this, yeah. and so always taking into consideration that you know if if I keep trying at something and keep doing my best, um, mm. it, it's gonna go somewhere. So that's a, that's a value that's really helped me a lot mm -hmm. um, in my business life and also in my career. Yes, and then your podcast. Yeah, just so. I run a, a, a business podcast, so we talk to uh -huh. entrepreneurs from all over the world and right. basically understanding their journeys, um, what factors led to their success or even failure. Um, yeah. And we have those really awesome conversations. It's called Boardroom Banter Podcast. Uh, uh -huh. If you look us up on Instagram, um, on everywhere where you might listen to our podcasts, Spotify, Apple Music, Google Podcasts. At um, your handle at, so that they at can At Boardroom get Banter. So at Boardroom Banter. At boardroom banter mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah and maybe the most influential or inspiring um, business figure I'd, I'd say I haven't met them before but it's definitely King Solomon so <laughs> I read I read proverbs and 
if you yeah. if you want a playbook on how to be successful in life and in business yeah i'd say read read the bible in the book of proverbs he was yes. the richest man at some point and uh, yeah. that's and the best and business and advice and the women ever. did the thing but yeah. anyways right and they can follow you at sean yes underscore i'm Absinia. sean sean karanja sean underscore Co karanja, karanja. Mm -hmm. um, find me on linkedin as well sean karanja instagram sean karanja um, yeah. very s-e-a-n so right. sean s-e-a-n karanja um, yeah Four connect with me i'm happy mm -hmm. to talk i'm happy to consult mentor consult yeah. etc uh -huh. and i'm um, definitely always willing to pay it forward nice great Re really it's really interesting as well as really amazing to have young people like you who've had this experience and this kind of skills and the kind of wisdom that you give in such conversation. I, I definitely believe you're destined for the skies and we can't wait to see Amen. you up there on top. Amen. And thank Amen. you so much for coming through as well. Thank you so much for having me. Right, Karibu Sana. So that's why you put a close to it. Kesho ni Labor Day, so we'll be here. We'll be here. I promise you'll be here at Y254 Channel and at Brown Sakona One. Thank you for watching and thank you to Sean for coming through. We'll definitely see you tomorrow bright and early right here. So stay tuned. See you tomorrow. <laughs>